When you think about the history of our planet, how do you imagine it? What do you picture? Do you think about the march of progress? Or a phylogenetic tree? Perhaps you might picture the evolution of life and environments like a series of snapshots or a panorama, one spanning the history of our planet. The truth is, there are many ways to imagine and perceive the evolution of Earth and life through time. What I'd like to do now is tell you about some of the biggest and most important trends in how organisms and environments have changed over the history of our world. You are bound to learn more about these trends in the future as you dig deeper into historical geology. In the meantime, this primer will give you an idea of some things to keep an eye out for. Before we begin, it's important to recognize that these trends are called time series. A time series is any set of data points organized by order of time. Simply put, a time series shows how one variable depends on time. Time series can be illustrated as graphs in which one axis of the plot represents the variable and the other axis is time. Usually the independent variable, time, is shown on the horizontal axis. The dependent variable, the variable that depends on the value of the independent variable, time, is illustrated on the vertical axis of the plot. Of course, in geology, we can measure time in one or two ways. We have both absolute ages, measured in years prior to the present, and we have relative ages, corresponding to chronostratigraphic units, or bodies of rock, that we can identify all around the world. You can convert absolute ages to chronostratigraphic units, and vice versa using the geologic time scale. In historical geology, one can use absolute ages or relative ages for the horizontal axis in a time series. For absolute ages, time on the horizontal axis is usually measured as years before the present time or the number of years into the past. Usually, this number is provided as mega anna, or ma. One mega anna equals a time span of one million years. So, if something is one mega anna, it means that it occurred roughly one million years prior to now. If we want to talk about an even older event, we may use giga anna. One giga anna equals one billion years. So something that happened one giga anna happened one billion years ago. So then, what dependent variables do we care about? What things on Earth have actually changed over time. Let's begin with something basic. Biodiversity is the variety of life on our world, or alternatively, a particular place or ecosystem. Counting taxa, like species, is one of the easiest ways to get a sense of biodiversity. Scientists have identified over 1.4 million species on Earth today, and some researchers estimate that there could be anywhere between 3 and 30 million species of plants, animals, fungi, protists, and prokaryotes overall. 
Paleontologists so far have discovered more than 250,000 species in the fossil record. Many of these species are extinct. So the number of species that have ever existed on our planet may be astronomical. In any case, many paleontologists have wondered how the number of animal taxa has changed over time. In particular, paleontologists wonder how biodiversity has varied over the course of the Phanerozoic Eon. Animals first evolved at the beginning of the Phanerozoic Eon around 550 million years ago. Prior to the Phanerozoic Eon, most life on Earth was microscopic in size. It was things like bacteria and protists, which left few fossils. For this reason and others, the Phanerozoic Eon is known as the Eon of Visible Life. This plot illustrates the trend in biodiversity over the Phanerozoic Eon, or the last 550 million years. We call this graph the Phanerozoic Diversity Curve, and it is one of the most important graphs in all of science. In this curve, the dependent variable, biodiversity, is the number of taxa, like genera or species. As you can see, there are a few interesting things going on. First and foremost, the number of taxa has increased over time. There are more taxa in young rocks than there are in old ones. And there are more species alive today than at any other time in Earth history. Second, you can see that there were a number of times in Earth history when biodiversity declined rapidly. The steep peaks represent mass extinctions. During mass extinctions, three out of every four species went extinct over a span of a few million years or less due to some cataclysmic event like an asteroid impact, volcanic eruption, or an episode of climate change. In time, you will learn more about the Phanerozoic diversity curve and mass extinctions in general. For now, let's turn our attention to some other interesting and important trends in the evolution of life and environments over time. You've learned that paleoecology is the study of the life and times of fossil organisms. When it comes to ancient organisms and species, we primarily care about where they lived and how they lived. We care about if and how they moved, how they fed and acquired resources, and how they developed into adults and produced offspring, how they reproduced. But given what we know, if organisms evolve over time, then it must also be true that their communities and ecosystems change as well. After all, our oceans are very different from those populated by early sea animals it stands to reason that they did different things, lived in different places, moved and fed and reproduced in their own unique ways. Let's look at tiering. Tiering refers to how benthic organisms stagger themselves above or below the surface, like the ocean floor. Epifaunal organisms, as you can see, stagger themselves at various heights above the sea floor, so they aren't all competing for the exact same limited resources. Likewise, infaunal organisms stagger themselves with regard to their depth. 
Some organisms burrow shallow tunnels while others establish themselves deep beneath the sea floor. In this way, organisms can avoid crossing paths and competing for materials they might find buried in the sediment. Interestingly enough, there have been major changes in tiering over time. This illustration shows you the trend in tiering over the Phanerozoic. During the early Paleozoic, during the Cambrian and Ordovician, organisms primarily lived near the sea floor and did not rise high above it or burrow deep beneath it. As time passed, however, organisms began to evolve that reached high levels into the water and deep into the sediment. The amount of tearing overall has generally increased over time. In faunal organisms, have a big effect on sediment. Bioturbation is the disturbance and moving of sediment by organisms like plants and animals. The most common agents of bioturbation are burrowing animals and plants with roots. One of the biggest consequences of bioturbation is sediment mixing. Organisms can mix different layers of sediment, making it hard to distinguish strata. Not surprisingly, given that the infaunal tearing has increased over time, so has bioturbation. In fact, the evolution of animals responsible for bioturbation caused one of the most dramatic environmental changes in the history of our planet. Prior to the origin of animals around 550 million years ago, there was virtually no bioturbation. Sedimentary layers were deposited as clean, distinct strata, and everywhere the ocean floor was covered by green, living mats made of microorganisms called microbial mats, like the one shown here. The my Microbial mat is green because it consists of algae-like microorganisms which use photosynthesis and sunlight to make their own food. But when animals evolved at the end of the Proterozoic Eon, they fundamentally altered the environment around them, causing an event called the Cambrian Substrate Revolution or Agronomic Revolution. During this revolution, for the first time in the history of our world, animals began to consume the microbial mats that covered the sea floor, and they began to burrow into the sediment. Bioturbation began to disturb sedimentary layers and mix sediment together, producing strata with poorly defined and irregular boundaries like those shown here. The amount of bioturbation has increased periodically over the last 550 million years. One last trend of note deals with predation. In predation, predators are carnivores that hunt, kill, and eat other organisms known as prey. If we look at the fossil record, we find a wealth of evidence to suggest that predation has increased over time. Let's focus on the ocean. This time series illustrates the proportion or percentage of species in the ocean that are predators at various times during the Phanerozoic Eon. As you can see, there is a clear trend. The percentage of predator species in the ocean has increased over time. Predators became more common in the ocean over the last 550 million years. 
Instead of looking at the body fossil record of predators, we can alternatively look at the trace fossil record of predation, fossils which we call predation traces. These trace fossils include tooth and claw marks left by predators and scavengers as they fed off of bones. They also include distinct holes found in many fossils of snails and clamshells. These holes are created by predators who drill into the shells of these animals to get at their soft parts within. This time series shows how the frequency of predation traces has changed over time. Again, there is clear evidence of increasing predation over time. Predation, bioturbation, tearing, and biodiversity are just a few of many things with significant trends in their evolution over time. As you continue to look carefully at the geologic record, you are bound to find many more and intriguing ways that life and environments have changed over time.